Hello, today I'm going to be making a hook rack and we're going to put some nice flowing natural designs on it. So we'll probably have two leaves at the top and then maybe sort of a, a branch or root at the bottom. We're going to put four hooks on this and rivet them on and I'm going to do a, a countersunk rivet so that you can put this up against a wall and it's still flush on the back. Let's go straight into it. Start working on the hooks, we can go half on, half off, over the far edge, just 6mm round bar, working that down into a taper. Knock the corners off, go to octagon, and roll that to get round. work that end down so it's nice and fine before we roll it into a scroll. So we can begin to scroll that up, work in the very end. We'll do a roll up scroll. So we can bend that up into a hook now, just over the horn. Quenched off the end, just so we don't distort it or bend it too much. And now we can just wrap that up into a hook. There we go, little finished hook. So the rest of them I've got a jig for, and I'll show you that now. For the next couple of hooks, I'm gonna use this jig. It's pretty simple, rather ugly welds that I've done on it, but hey, it works. So you can get your little snub end scroll into there, hold it and then just wrap it around. And it's, it's really easy, nice and quick. Let's get it done. So I quench the end off, get that in there, wrap it around, just sort the end out. That's hook number two done. Hook number three. And hook number four. I've cut the hooks off the bars and I'm just going to come on the near edge and create an isolation. I've got the four hooks here, but as you can see, we need to put a hole in them so we can rivet them on to the back plate. I've got a centre punch so I can mark a hole and then I'll drill them rather than trying to punch them as they're, they're very small. Just make sure as well that it's running running flat. So I'll drill them to 6.5 mil as we'll use 6 mil bar for the rivets. This is the material that we're going to be using for the back plate of this hook rack. So I'm going to find the middle and scribe this line on so we can split the end and we can have two little lumps of material which we can then form into these. I'm going to do a leaf and then one which is going to be a little bit like a like a root or a branch. And I'll do, I'll take 60 mil of material. So to split this, obviously you could do it hot, but I don't really like to cut things hot as it, you get a really nasty edge sometimes. So to just make it really nice and quick, and because this is it's cold anyway, I'll do it with the angle grinder. So you can see one of the pieces is slightly shorter and that one's going to be the root, the other one's going to have the leaf on. And so we've just got a little bit more material for that leaf, basically. So I'll start forging on the leaf and just make a short point on the end of the bar. Go over the far edge and isolate off that point. down the material. So now we can go to octagon and then to round. So 
knock that corner down. You've got a round face hammer and spread the cheeks of it, leaving sort of a central vein in the middle. Drawing the material down to the root, what we can do is we can angle the hammer over and really nip the material out by reducing that surface area contact using the edge of the hammer. Good, and then it's around just like the other piece. Just to refine the transition between the bar and the two split pieces, we'll come in and work this area with a chisel. And if we go back to the anvil, I can run that line down the bar a little bit. Run it in. We can begin to wrap these around and put a bit more shape into them. I think we'll do a loop the loop on this side. Take another heat. So something like that for the leaf. We can now just put a bit more shape on the other half. So on this little root, I tend to put just a little bend out so we get a whiplash design coming on. So it, it's very Art Nouveau, this sort of design style, or at least I think it is. What I need to do is obviously do this design but on the other end of the back plate. So I'll cut it off and do forge all of this out again I'll do it off camera because it's all just exactly the same as you've just watched. So the other side is all done. I'm going to scribe some lines on now and then centre punch where we need these holes. And I'm going to do it, I'm going to drill the holes rather than try punching them. As if, if we do punch them we might get a little bit of distortion on the edges and I don't know how that's going to look and I think I want it to be nice and parallel, these edges parallel, rather than swell out as we get those six mil holes in there, or 6.5 mil probably as we'll use a six mil bar, round bar for the rivets. So I'll scribe it on and then punch, uh, center punch them and drill them. So to get that next scribe line on, I'm gonna put the edge of the calipers into the, the little uh, centre punch mark that we've already done and then just scribe my line. So these are going to be the holes which we can screw it onto, a, onto the wall and then these two that I've just scribed and are dotting now are going to be the first hooks. So I'll drill all of these holes. These four are for the hooks. I'll drill those at about 6.5 mil, so we've got a little bit of leeway to get the rivets in. And then these two I'll drill at about 4.5 mil.
and that's for the screws. So we've got the hooks here, they're going to go there and then we've got these little pieces of 6mm bar which are going to go in. And so I'm literally for the rivets just using a little rod of 6mm round bar. There's no need really to make a rivet as the rivet just makes itself as you put it in the hole and hammer on it. Also you can see I've drilled these holes in and these two are the screw holes so they're countersunk and I've also countersunk, put a deep countersunk on the back so that as we're riveting this on the rivet will go flush with the back so that it will then sit nicely on the wall. So I'll heat these up, again I'll do it hot, it's just another, another little trick rather than doing it cold, if you do it cold it can crack the rivet as you're, you're, as you're upsetting the material so if we do it hot it just prevents that. it over and go with the ball bead. There we go, riveted on hook. Needs a little bit of a straighten. You can just bring it over a little bit. I'll do the rest for all the others. There we are, there's the finished torque prep. We didn't perhaps use the most traditional method of blacksmithing to get there, as I did drill all the holes rather than punch them. But I like, on this particular style, I like having the, those parallel sides, top and bottom, rather than punching the holes, which would give, give a, a swelling. So it's more of a design, design reason rather than the blacksmithing reason. Obviously, you can punch them if you want, but you will get a little bit of a swelling just on, on either end. Obviously, you can put loads of hooks on these. You can make it as long as you want. Make a, a metre long hook rack and have, have 20 hooks on it or whatever. You know, they, they can be lengthened and shortened however you want to and obviously put loads of, loads of different designs on. I just did this sort of Art Nouveau flowing, flowing natural design with that whiplash on the bottom for the roof. Whatever you want, really. Thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed watching me make this hook rack and I hope that you can go into your garage or your back garden or wherever it is that you make stuff and give it a go yourself.